Hello. Hello. No, they are actually not going to be give, giving unstaked Ethereum to users as rewards. The unstaked Ethereum actually belongs to someone, so you can't actually give it to users as, re as rewards. They are just basically Ethereum uh, without a staking pool, and they're probably going to all go to Lido and Rocket Pool. That's what's going to happen. I don't think there's going to be a big sell-off, but uh, we'll see what happens because there's a lot of Ethereum actually selling off. We actually got a lot of news today. Um, there's obviously 1. million, not 1.4 million dollars, 1.4 million Ethereum that's going to be withdrawn over like the next four or five days. The SEC is renewing their target on DeFi with rule changes. Of course, Elon Musk is getting into crypto. And Twitter is trying to become a crypto exchange as well as a stock exchange because Elon Musk is desperate to basically resuscitate his uh, Twitter buy. And crypto is might be bracing for a recession, but I don't think the recession will hit crypto that hard. And also, Jeremy Hogan, the pro XRP lawyer, is discussing the finer details of the XRP lawsuit. He's actually saying being more realistic, it's not an open shot case. Of course, he still thinks that Ripple is going to win the case, which they might well win the case. So that's what we're actually going to go over today. So let's get started right away. Let's get started with Ethereum and uh, the unstaking business that uh, Ethereum is actually going to go through. And the on-chain data forecast that the, with, the, the withdrawal of 1. million for Ethereum, not $1.4 million worth of Ethereum, but indeed 1.4 million Ethereum, which would actually be something like 6 billion, well, not 6 billion, like $3 billion right now. So Ethereum on-chain data forecasts the withdrawal of 1.4 million Ethereum over the next few days. Ethereum price rallied as deposits briefly surged after Shapella. Shapella was Shanghai, basically. Uh, that is the, um, that, that's the upgrade that we just did. But on-chain data suggests that 1.4 million Ethereum would be withdrawn in short term. And I, a lot of that is because a lot of validators are exiting. Um, obviously, staking pools like Kraken and Coinbase have to dissolve because of SEC regulations. But we're all wondering, what does this have to do with Ethereum price? And we're going to try to answer that question. Ethereum's long-anticipated Shanghai and Capella upgrade was activated on April 12th. And the total withdrawals in the first 40 hours after Chappelle's upgrade stood at 142,425 Ethereum per Nansen data. This falls in line with previous estimates. So there's roughly going to be like 1.4 million Ethereum that's just free floating out there. No, they're not going to be staking rewards, uh, but they are going to be looking for a new home or they're going to be sold. My guess is like 85% is going to be looking for a new home and a new, uh, and a new pool. Uh, which I, which is why I think Lido and Rocket Pool are definitely going to be big benef uh, beneficiaries in all of this. Of course, um, Ethereum moved to withdrawals. The val so like the way they can tell this is that the the Ethereum on validators are poised to actually be withdrawn. Um, over seventy point one percent of the validators have changed to whatever zero x o one, with um, four hundred and seven thousand worth over eight hundred fifty million set uh, for withdrawal. So. They've uh, the, a lot of these uh, Ethereum validators that indicated that they are actually going to withdraw. So there's going to be an outpouring of Ethereum. Some's going to be sold. Most is actually probably going to move to other pools, other validators. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. But there is a lot of free floating Ethereum out there. Once again, Lido Rocket Pool, great opportunities uh, um, because there is going to be Ethereum flowing in. It, they're obviously going to move with the market. But overall, I think they should have an upward trajectory for at least the next few days. So for the most part, um, I don't think Ethereum is going to suffer any kind of big loss, but if Ethereum like retraces down below 2000, that doesn't really surprise me. Bitcoin's down about $500 today. Most of the alts are still up from where they were 24 hours ago, but that might change very, very quickly. Um, but it's not really going to move down all that much. Not in my opinion. I, I really don't see it moving down all that much. So let's actually go look at um, let's actually look at the SEC targeting DeFi because the SEC has been Gary Ginsler has been a busy boy. Ginsler definitely has been a busy boy. They're actually trying to rewrite the rules so that uh, so that DeFi actually fits in under the SEC's jurisdiction. They've made things a little bit tighter 
in terms of uh, in terms of like what they actually think um, a, a, like a crypto exchange or security exchange actually is. So they're not holding any punches back. You know, they want to make sure that all exchanges actually do have to register with the SEC. And Gensler has been a very, very busy boy lately um, because he has a lot of lawsuits that he's actually pursuing or that are, are kind of like turning against him right now. So he's been a very, very busy boy. I don't really know how the DeFi thing is going to turn out. I mean, if DeFi is truly decentralized and he can only manage the United States, I don't know how much effect that's going to have. But he wants all these protocols to, want to register with the SEC if they want to operate to U.S. customers. I'm not really even sure if that's truly possible or not. In fact, I'm very doubtful that what he wants is actually possible. Um, so we'll definitely have to look at that uh, in the future and how a lot of these lawsuits actually work out. Because he's definitely trying to um, stretch his arm over crypto. But, you know, as we've discussed, like his take on crypto may not matter all that much depending on how the judges actually rule. He's in some, he's actually in some pretty tough lawsuits. So, and there's definitely not like anything that says he's literally going to like win or lose on any of those things. So he is trying to like rewrite some of the rules um, to make it more stringent on crypto exchanges. He obviously is operating under the assumption that all cryptos are securities, which may or may not be true, or all non-Bitcoin cryptos are securities, which once again may or may not be true. New people would sell Ethereum, so they linked with limited withdrawals. They did, but I mean, like, there's still going to be 1.4 million uh, floating around, and that's a large amount of Ethereum. 1. Million, 1.4 million floating around can definitely impact price. I feel like Ethereum doesn't know what it wants to be now. It's considered a bond no long, and no longer extra hard money. Well, Ethereum isn't completely like Bitcoin, though. Ethereum honestly is not like Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin doesn't really have any other purpose, whereas Ethereum actually functions in a lot of other purposes as well. So it, it's kind of hard to pinpoint what Ethereum actually wants to be or what Ethereum is. It could be like a smart contract currency. It could be They could want to be hard money. They also want to be this and they also want to be that. It's very, very hard to say what Ethereum actually is. And I think that's part of the issue for like, I, th I do think that's part of the issue for Ethereum. They're not complete, like they're not completely certain on what it actually needs to be, which kind of sucks for Ethereum uh, itself. But, you know, like, that's just how it goes. I, I do think, like, if anything is going to flip Bitcoin, Ethereum probably has the best chance, but I, st I still don't really see anything like flipping Bitcoin for certain. Uh, Ethereum will be a store of value like Bitcoin. This is because its chain doesn't work. Well, that's a problem because... You know, well, that's not necessarily true. Ethereum has a bunch of layer twos. Bitcoin has lightning as well. But Ethereum has so much functionality built on it that it almost has to work. Like they have to like find some way to jerry-rig Ethereum where all this stuff actually works. Like because like there's so much stuff built on it, it's going to be hard to move to any other chain. Like they've been building on this legacy platform for like almost what, like seven, eight years now. And all the money is actually trapped on this legacy type of platform and tech. Uh, all this, um, all this money is trapped on like a kind of a legacy platform technology. So it, it's not working. Um, so it can't just it can't just be like do nothing else besides store a value like Bitcoin. Ethereum has what seventy five crypto projects. Yeah, pro actually probably more than 75% of crypto projects. And all the big ones with a lot of money are actually on Ethereum. And the thing is, like, people aren't really selling Ethereum right now. Because Ethereum price isn't really dropping. Like, there's going to be about 1.4 million out in the open. But most of that's not going to be sold. Most of that's just going to be restaked in either Rocket Pool or Lido. And the thing is, like, the percentage of Ethereum staked isn't really that high anyways. It is like, in essence, it is sort of a luxury blockchain. You're right about that. But at the same time, like all these layer twos and all this other stuff, that's a lot of the stuff that's being built on Ethereum is for the purpose of using Ethereum's liquidity and what it actually offers the market right now. The technology, I don't think anyone pretends the technology is really that great. Because now that it's switched to proof of stake, it's no different from anything else. 
I don't get why institutions will use Ethereum over Cardano, for example, maybe because it's the first blockchain. It's because a lot of the projects are already on there and it's because they have the liquidity. I mean, like a lot of the, look, we know that a lot of crypto projects are built solely to make money. And since all the money is literally on Ethereum, they can't really get off of it. Aren't more projects migrating off Ethereum than new projects being built on it? Um, not, I don't think so. Uh, I, I mean, like, I still think like most of the big ones, they're not really migrating off of Ethereum. They're becoming multi-chain. So their Ethereum component is still there, but they're trying to uh, do multi-chain. Like Uniswap is going to BNB, but that mean, doesn't mean they're abandoning Ethereum. They still have an Ethereum version. They just have, they're just concentrating more on their BNB version because it's kind of like their new thing. So the money's not really moving off of Ethereum. And plus like everyone's building EVMs. Like literally everyone is building like EVMs. So the fact that everyone's actually building EVMs um, basically just pumps up Ethereum even more because they're tr everyone's trying to make their stuff Ethereum compatible. So that actually kind of helps Ethereum in a way. And like once you have once you have that much dominance in the market and people are used to your used to your platform. It's really, it, like once you have that much dominance and people use your platform, it's really, really hard for people to actually move off. DYDX did move from Ethereum to Cosmos though. I mean, I think some projects have to, but other projects are just building their own layer twos on Ethereum. So, I mean, you look at IMX, you look at Arbitrum, you look at ZK Sync, you look at, uh, you look at Polygon, like there's a ton of scaling solutions on Ethereum. <clears throat> So I think people are going to try to stick by Ethereum as much as possible. Um, and they're, they're not really going to, going to want to move anywhere else. Now, if I was starting a new project, would I start it on Ethereum? Unless I would really wanted to use the liquidity, probably not. But if you look at the other DEXs, they don't have nearly as much liquidity as Ethereum. So like getting, like basically getting on exchanges and getting volume for your coin might actually be really, really hard if you don't actually build on Ethereum. So that's why they're looking at Ethereum. So let's actually look at the, uh, also Bitcoin is, might be actually bracing for a recession. Um, I don't know if there's actually going to be like a big, big recession or anything, but that's kind of why the market dropped a little bit today. And that's why the Dow Jones Industrial Index is actually down today. It's because of the general economy, because the general economy might be bracing for recession. But I'm not really sure how much that's actually going to impact crypto. The Dow has fallen about 200 points, um, well, 300 points now, and everything else is down. But crypto, was, you know, like it's really only fallen about two, 300 points as well. And that's, you know, like crypto is holding back pretty well. So the earnings for the retail sector um, for Q1 were not that good. But we kind of expected the earnings for the retail sector for Q1 to kind of suck because people are pulling back on their spending. So the Dow Jones, the DJIA fell Friday as investors assessed a weak retail sales report, as well as stronger than expected corporate earnings. So the sales were weak, but the corporate earnings were still strong, probably meaning that they're squeezing us for money. So the 30, the 30 stock Dow dropped 222 points. The moves follow weaker than expected advanced retail sales data that showed consumer spending fell twice as much as expected in March. So people aren't spending that much anymore. That's what they're really saying. Retail sales declined by 1% last month, more than the 0.5% fall expected by economists polled by the Dow Jones. As consumers dealt with growing recession fears, retail sales came in weaker than expected, but a lot of but a lot of the miss had to do with lower gas prices, which all things being equal is a slight positive for spending. But the thing is like, that's going to go up in uh, April, obviously, because OPEC's cut. So inflation has been coming down as gas prices have been coming down, but that kind of reversed in April. So, you know, the next inflation report in April could honestly like pull the market down even more. It's not going back to 15,000 or whatever, but um, it could pull it back into the 20s pretty easily depending on how high we go before the next CPI actually comes out. The, but retail sales are disappointing, and that offset, set the, uh, offset the excitement. JP Morgan reported record revenue that beat uh, analyst expectations, with the stock rising more than 7%. Wells Fargo were flat. But the overall like fall in retail does signal that people are actually slowing down in spending. And I'm not really sure what that says for crypto, but if people are... Uh, 
like slowing down in spending, which means that that might mean they don't they don't have much money left. And if they don't have much money left, they're probably not going to invest in the crypto. But however, the banking runs, um, on the other hand, have actually gotten more people to put money in banks into crypto. Although like the Fed has actually promised to backstop all the banks. So that actually might be coming to an end. But anyways, the economic data does not bode super well for the economy. Um, retail sales actually slowed down more than expected as people like are shrinking back and basically like conserving their money rather than spending their money like crazy. Thanks, man. Thanks, Little Nation. Now that, or any and can do without about ETH now. I'm buying because short nobody can make exchanges stop catering to it without looking corrupt and jealous. I mean, like, th thanks for the donation, Thomas. You might, Thomas Conservative, you might actually be right about that. Um, I'm not saying you're wrong about that, but like, I mean, Gensler, like, Gensler also um, has said that he might go after Ethereum, but unless he wins the Ripple case, I doubt he's going after Ethereum. I highly doubt he's going after Ethereum unless he wins the Ripple case because he won't have teeth if he doesn't win the Ripple case. And the thing is, like, I don't really, I don't really buy all the projects moving off Ethereum because if you read deeper into them, they're basically just like diversifying their liquidity pool. They're not actually going off of Ethereum. Uh, can you please click on that? I don't really know who Sam Altman is. So, I mean, a lot. I mean, like that's why a lot rides on this Ripple case, um, because like the precedent that it's the precedent that it sets will be pretty big. Uh, even if he did, exchanges will never stop selling it. I if he did, I think U.S. exchanges. I mean, if he would actually have to stop. But also, if he did, I think U.S. exchanges would actually fight him. And Gary Gensler has enough. Get uh, like Gary Gensler has enough legal trouble on his hands without fighting the Ethereum crowd as well. So like Ginzer might be very Ginzer actually might be more well aware of the limits of his own power more than people actually think. As much as he pretends to be all powerful in this in this environment, he's not actually all powerful. Thank God, he's not actually all powerful. Uh, in terms of the XRP case, we're definitely going to look at that um, because Jeremy Holgan has actually like said it's not an open and shut case. It's actually a very difficult decision. And that's why Judge Torres, uh, that's why Judge Torres is actually um, having a hard time. So like his, his uh, quote, like he communicates mostly through Twitter. He's a partner at Holgan and Holgan, but they're more of like a tort specialty. They're not really a securities, uh, securities expert. Um, Jake Trevinsky has refused to comment on this lawsuit at all because of the stupid comments that he's been getting. So we kind of have to like analyze this. So the big battle between the SEC and crypto, a lot of comments, uh, the, uh, uh, the below threat suggested it's a no brainer ask. asked, why is it taking the judge so long? Not true. This is a nuanced legal battle in which the future of crypto as we now may actually hinge. So he's obviously on the side that Ripple is not a security. And we're kind of all on that side because we don't actually want XRP to be a security. So the thing is, like, um, Ripple can only possibly fit under the definition of an investment contract. It's not a stock or bond. Obviously, like, there's no promise and return on it. It's not a stock because you don't owe parts of the company. So in response to Ripple's argument that there must be a contract to have an investment contract, the SEC cited a number of cases in which, to one degree or another, there's no formal written agreement. This argument here is what uh, how he covers almost any investment purchase. So... The crappy thing about this is the SEC is actually right about this. There have been many things that have been com considered investment contracts in the past without really having any form of real contract. And rulings have generally gone the SEC's way. The thing is, Torres doesn't really pay that much attention to other circuit rulings, but it does actually weigh um, the, 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 uh, it, but it does actually weigh on legal findings. So what the SEC is really arguing that prongs two, three, and four, when taken together, supplant the, supplant the need for ele elements of a legal contract. In other words, Howie doesn't require a formal contract because the common enterprise and expectation of profits is the contract analysis. So let's be honest. Everyone who's buying XRP or any crypto is expecting profits. If people are saying otherwise, they're honestly like full of crap. I mean, like 
Yes, there are those few people that are actually buying to transfer money, but almost everyone is buying for expectation of profits. The common enterprise, I think, is where they kind of have an argument. And, um, you know, their, their argument is that Ripple's actions don't actually affect price, but that actually might be hard to get around because Brad Garlinghouse has actually come, out, come on and actually said that, yes, for the last few years, Ripple has actually bought back XRP to maintain a fair market price. So I don't really know how that argument's actually going to go. I do think XRP price is driven mainly by Bitcoin, but Ripple's, like, uh, like Ripple's efforts do actually matter. As you can see, like, you know, with... Well, obviously Ripple's airdrops and uh, Ripple's uh, efforts and like these project airdrops, but I, I would have to like say like the expectation that the court case was going to resolve at the end of March, that definitely had a, uh, an effect on XRP's pump. So unfortunately for Ripple, the SEC has had early success in crypto cases on this issue in cases which the crypto companies did not raise uh, the post loss obligation issue. Luckily for Ripple, Torres hasn't put too much weight so far on what her colleagues have done. So Torres doesn't rule depending on what other circuits have ruled on, but it does actually play into the psyche. Looking at the SEC's counter arguments and cases, you can see why lawyers think that Ripple raised this issue with an eye towards obtaining an appellate ruling. Uh, I disagree. There's enough in Ripple's briefs for the trial judge to rule in its favor. So Basically, like what a lot of other lawyers actually think is that the SEC will actually win on this point and then Ripple will appeal and their appeal will actually be granted. Uh, Hogan obviously doesn't think so. Obviously, look, Hogan's going to be biased towards XRP because one, like he, like his videos about XR, his, his legal briefs on XRP was really thrived. He's getting a lot of popularity off this and he's really making a name for himself. Uh, but I think he's like, I think Hogan himself has also bought fully into this XRP stuff. Decentraliz and that's where decentralization comes in. The reason why the other case is lost is because looking at the purchase of the crypto from a traditional standpoint, it smells like a strange type of investment purchase that Howie is supposed to capture, but it's not. Because in traditional purchase, it would make no sense for someone to buy an asset without having some legal recourse if the seller screwed you over. I think that's mainly because crypto is unregulated, though. I mean, that's partially because of this whole wild, wild west narrative. I, I don't really know if that... Uh, technically applies to any of this. But a traditional purchase is made from a centralized entity. Historically, sales of securities are from centralized sellers. I mean, yes, but like, I mean, yeah, I mean, but when you buy on the stock market, I don't think you buy directly. Like for most retail investors, when you buy stock on the market, like via E-Trade for instance, I don't think you actually buy from the company. I think you're buying from other sellers, if I'm not mistaken. The difference in crypto is that it does it does make sense to purchase crypto because it's decentralized. No one owns the network. Okay, uh, that depends. But for in Ripple's case, that's probably right because Ripple doesn't own most of the regular uh, the validators. It and so it makes sense that someone might purchase XRP as an investment without having a contract with anyone. That's the key differentiator. But we already kind of went over that it doesn't actually require some kind of contract. As long as the price at least somewhat depends on the efforts of the company, I'm not really sure how much. Uh, I, I'm not really sure how much uh, this argument will actually work, and this is why I believe that if the judge or other wonderful law clerk understands the technology, Ripple will win on this issue. If the judge doesn't grasp crypto that crypt, what well, crypto is, well, we might be looking at an appeal of the issue. But this is a line in the sand. I don't. I think the SEC has already said it doesn't matter if it's actually decentralized or not. Um, I mean. Their 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 uh their point is that like Ripple was the original issuer of XRP, which regardless of how you want to twist it, is kind of true. Yes, they formed two separate entities, and basically like one donated all the XRP to the other. But a lot of times, like courts will rule on the spirit of the law. Actually, most of the times they will. So I don't think that argument's actually going to work. So I'm not really sure if this like decentralization decentralized as of right now is actually all that strong of an argument. Maybe it will be. But I have, I definitely have my doubts. So Hogan is saying that because it's, because it's actually decentralized, like they have, uh, uh, Ripple has this case one, but I'm not really sure anything can depreciate in orange over pound. What would you hold? Would you hold Alluvium or Gala? Um, probably Gala still. I like their multiple, I, I like all their games that are actually coming out, but I think both Ethereum and Gala are good. 
What are more interesting is that the Ripple liquidity hub for companies include BTC, LTC, Ethereum. And I yeah, I'm actually going to make a video about that. I don't really know why that is. That could honestly be because of the lawsuit. Because they're basically like the Ripple liquidity hub is basically choosing all proof of work coins. And proof of work coins without uh, a pre mine are not the ones that the. Uh, not the ones that they're going to be targeting with the securities lawsuit. There's also a rumor that Doge is actually on that list as well. And I'm kind of, kind of, I'm going to kind of laugh if Doge is on that list. I, I don't really understand. Like the thing is, if Ripple actually operates mostly outside the United States, if most of their business is outside the United States, why would they not actually include XRP in their own liquidity hub? So yeah, interesting. So if there is a real argument to see if the security, especially since everyone expects profits, yeah, I, I really don't think you could actually make a winning argument on behalf of um, crypto that people are not expect are not investing with expectation of profit because all you really need to do is look at crypto Twitter. You look at, especially XRP Twitter, everyone is expecting generational profits. I, I think like people are, I think most people would just be completely lying if they said like, oh, I'm not in it for the money. If you're like posting about generational profits and then you go back and say, oh, I'm not in it for the money, who the hell is going to believe you exactly? I mean, like you got to be like really dumb to believe anyone that's like, you know, constantly shouting about generational wealth and leaving wealth for their kids. And then they go back and say like, oh, but I'm not in it for the money. Obviously, that's BS. Kadena is the king of all coins, especially POW. But Kadena is like hybrid POW POS. I'm 100 in it. Yeah, like I think if people are being truthful, most people are like massively in it for the money. Like some people might be shifting to try to help the lawsuit, but realistically, like if you just, oh, if you look back on crypto Twitter, if you look back on XRP Twitter or any crypto Twitter, like pretty much everyone's in it for the money and everyone bought coins with the expectation of profit. I think the common enterprise is the argument right there. And of course, there's the fair notice defense because the SEC, in my opinion, definitely did not give fair notice to Ripple or any other entity about what they were going to do. And that eventually could actually get the SEC in a lot of trouble because they did not give adequate time for people to actually defend themselves. In two cycles, you can become a millionaire. Basically, yeah, look, if you're going to become a, if you want to become a crypto millionaire, you should actually look at two cycles instead of one cycle. If you just look at one cycle, I, I think you're really restricting yourself to, you're, you're, I, th I definitely think you're restricting yourself if you're looking at one cycle because you're trying to get that 1,000x. Like if you're starting with like $10,000, definitely look for two cycles instead of one because in one cycle, you have to make 100x. If you take out taxes, even more. But with two cycles, all you need to do is make 10x and 10x. And I think the chances of you making 10x and 10x safely is way higher than the chance of you making 100x. If you look at a lot of the top 10, top 20 coins, a lot of them made more than 10x last, uh, a lot of them made more than 10x last cycle, but only a, a few, only a couple can actually can claim to make 100x. And a lot of the 100x coins like Shiba Inu, etc., are going to be extremely risky. So like 10x and 10x, I think is a much more solid investment strategy. Uh, basically like 10x and 10x, I, I do believe that like it's a much more solid investment strategy than trying to get 100x all at once because you're much less likely to lose it all, first of all. And of course, if you lose all your money, it's game over. But um, and you're also like much likely, more likely to achieve your goal and not overhold. Uh, selling your alts possibly probably next year in 2024 look i have to wait i think i have to wait until pretty late in the cycle for the DeFi stuff to actually kick up if the if my DeFi stuff doesn't actually kick up i, I could be like I, you know i really can't sell for that much profit ada may be seven figures but i didn't see ada doing the same gains against this the cycle yeah like Cardano was a much lower market cap last cycle. Like I said, I think this time is going to be like, it's going to be 10x and 10x. It's going to be like maybe 10, 12x, not so much 20x. And plus you did have a chance to buy Cardano at like 30 cents and, you, and most people didn't take it. Who cares about tech when I can get money? I mean, a lot of crypto techs for all these companies is pretty, a lot of crypto techs is very similar for all these companies if you truly, truly look at it. I mean, a lot, a lot of them offer fast transactions with low fees now. That's not really much of a thing anymore. The decentralization is another issue. I don't think any real coin has actually solved the trilemma, despite people claiming that their coin has solved the trilemma. It'll do a 2x um, all-time high. I mean, if you really look at it like the average... I think the average will be like three or four times all-time high for a lot of these, for coins altogether. Maybe like five times because you're going to take, 
uh, maybe like five times even. Because if you if you're thinking that Bitcoin's going to, like if you're thinking that crypto, um, if you actually are thinking that the overall crypto market cap is going to go to ten trillion, that's three point three times all time high. You take out like Bitcoin's going to be at a discount because it probably won't rise as much as the rest of the crypto market. So like you're talking about maybe 120k. So I would think like the average is about four times. Coins are going to have an average of 4x the last all-time high, which means BNB can get to like almost 2,800. Ethereum can get to like, if Ethereum follows that route, it can get to almost $20,000. I don't think Ethereum is going that high, by the way, but it, it's, it's not impossible. You know, XRP, if it follows that route, will reach $16. Cardano will reach $12. All these prices, I think, are overreaching for the top 10. I, I, I don't think like, you know, I think Bitcoin is going to be more of like the 2x uh in that 2x category, I think Ethereum is going to be in that 2x category as well. I think same thing for XRP and probably for ADA as well. Like for a lot of the top, like for the top five coins, I think like two, possibly 3x at the most in terms of like all time high. But even if, let's say like Cardano does two and a half x, right? It essentially goes to um, $7.50. That's still 12x from where we are right now. So that's where I'm getting that 10 to 12x multiplier. Same thing with XRP. If it goes to like seven, 10 bucks, you're still getting 10 X on it right now. Obviously XRP depends more on the lawsuit than anything else. I need a link to go to 30 to 35 bucks for me to exit. I think Chainlink can actually get 30 to 35 bucks. I mean, I don't even think 30 to 35 bucks was Link's all time high. Yeah, Chainlink was $52. And I still believe in Chainlink's use case overall. Uh, I definitely believe in Chainlink's use case overall. So I think like Chainlink will actually reach what you want it to reach. My opinion, to be truly decentralized, you must make your own coin and just walk away from the project. You can't claim to be decentralized when you're still making adjustments and announcements on your coin. Yeah, but you know, like the thing is like, I, I, uh, even in a community led project, you still have to have like a spokesperson. So the thing is like, I'm okay if, as long as you, as long as like you don't have most of the decision making power, like as long as the validators are actually making the decisions, I think you're truly decentralized. And as long as no one has like God back door keys, I think you're generally okay. I mean, that's kind of like, that's kind of my standard. I know other people's standards are going to be vastly different, but that's like, I'm just saying that's my standard. I think any standard above that is just a little too high to actually achieve, but we'll see. We'll see. People can lie all they want. Most people only care about making bank. Uh, any post that is all about ATH Lambo. Basically, if you look at all the most popular YouTube videos, it's all about like how this coin is going to moon and how that coin is going to moon and all these like crap theories care about decentral yeah the sec has already said they don't care about decentralization because like the sec basically says if, if there's a pre-mine of any sort or a pre-allocation of any sort then it's a security because then you're kind of benefiting off of like you know the this the then you're definitely benefiting and guaranteeing yourself a chunk of the money i think vet will do great as well i think bet will do pretty well i mean if vet goes like you know 2.5 x 3x that's like you know 50 to 75 cents i'm hoping it goes to a dollar but, you know, like even 50 to 75 cents would be pretty good. It's all about the annoying thumbnails with their mouths open wide. Not really. Like George doesn't act. If you actually look at George, George George's emails basically just have him like staring. It, it, he doesn't have like his mouth open wide in too many of those thumbnails. And his channel does great. Official Ripple. Yes, I know what the official Ripple post is. Like they included all proof of work to uh, coins. They dropped, like initially they did have XRP a couple of months ago, but they seem to have dropped it probably because of the SEC lawsuit. Ripple is acting in a way like they've already lost the lawsuit, which is probably how they should actually act because they're preparing for their worst case scenario. Thanks, man. Thanks for the donation. Gary doesn't care about it. They are just uh, moving the goalpost. If not, then something else. Well, I mean, Gary has actually always thought... Uh, Gensler has actually always thought that Ripple, uh, that XRP and all these cryptos are securities. If you check back on his MIT lectures, he actually says they're securities. Can you use that kind of thumbnail though? I've done those kind of thumbnails before. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Bullish weekend or not? Nah. I think the weekend's gonna be neutral as usual. I mean, like economic numbers coming in aren't that great. Um, the retail sales have slowed down, but overall, I think crypto's still bullish. Daily GUA refuel is the best channel for no price, but just pure knowledge. I mean, they're probably focused on Ethereum, right? Not going to lie, it's a great show. I enjoy watching Trojan mornings and I see. 
Mouth open thumbnails means it's going to be a great video because the crazier, the better the video. I mean, that's not true. That I mean, like, I guess they just make crazy predictions. Well, look, perma bulls ha like perma bulls attract a lot of people. That's why he's always bullish. I, I don't know if like, I don't know what George truly thinks, but I mean, like, perma bulls do attract a lot of viewers. But the thing is, like, I can't really, I really can't be perma bull because we've literally been in a bear market for like a year and a half. I don't really, I don't know how you can actually like, I don't know how you can play down like that we've been in a bear market. There's a theory that says the more, uh, the more views you get, you get. It depends. Like a lot of times those thumbnails do actually work. They look like largemouth bass out of the water. George in bullish long term. That's why. I mean, we're all bullish long term, but long term means more than like three or four years. And a lot of times we deter, we, we actually talk about crypto in cycles of one or two years. Pentagon leak that proves the forces have been in Ukraine to fight against Russia. The U.S. and NATO forces aren't actually fighting against Russia. The U.S., look, NATO has had forces in Ukraine since 2014. I'm looking, uh, I'm holding 55,000 Algo and have 125,000 Gala. There's been like, there's like been like a dozen special operations forces in Russia for like a long time. And the thing is like Black Sun, we're not going, we're not going to send weapons there without sending logistic support there. So our soldiers aren't actually fighting the Russians, but they might be providing like logistical support for the weapons we send. Carl from the moon didn't delete his account. Look, Carl from the, Carl from the moon never actually does any of that stuff he actually says he's going to do. Like he basically makes a prediction, gets it wrong, and then he says like, I was just kidding. Is it fine? Is it, it's fine to be long term bullish, but when people talk today, most people are talking more short term because most crypto and miss most crypto investors are focusing on the short term. That's why, like very few crypto investors actually focus on like more than a four year cycle. I would say you should focus on four year cycle. If your crypto hasn't made you money in four years, it's probably time to go on to another crypto. Uh, George said yesterday that the next bull market also will be in 2025, so he's not bullish all the time. I think it's going to be 2024 into 2025 maybe, but it actually might come sooner than George thinks. There, especially with the China-Hong Kong thing, I'm kind of bullish on that. There are many Americans fighting in Ukraine. As, yeah, but I mean, like, they're not official, like, American army or American special forces. Like, the foreign legion's been, like, they haven't really been secret about the foreign legion. That's been there since the beginning of the war. Like, there are actually, like, American, British, and, like, expat volunteers that actually fight in Ukraine. They're actually really instrumental in training battalions yeah like i would i would have moved on on icx i mean i'm hoping icx has another revival this bull run i kind of doubt it but i'm hoping it does and i still have a small bag of icx by the ways and if it goes crazy then i'm good any low cap coin to gamble on i mean i've already said safe haven all along maybe that like chain gpt thing uh ripple net does uh volume of swift seems to be correct it's probably correct if it's even that much, honestly, right now. Like that's seven ten thousandth, and like sixty percent of that is ODL. So the thing is, like, I don't think. Look, I don't think Swift's gonna be replaced anytime soon. You've seen their technology with like Swift G, uh, with Swift Instant, and Swift Go and Swift Now that they can actually do really fast settlement. US, uh, EOS now becoming EVM compatible after years of trying to beat Ethereum. EOS did get another big partnership, but I'm still not bullish on EOS. I might be late jumping onto the boat with EOS, but I'm fine with that. I'm just going to leave EOS to people who actually like EOS. Why no one talk about Polkadot? Is it dead? It's not dead, but everyone's talking about Polkadot parachains and not Polkadot itself. The parachains, I do believe, use Polkadot as security. But like... Right now, I think between Polkadot and Cosmos, I would take Cosmos just for the staking. EOS, I think, is dead, but they did get a new, like, multi-million dollar partnership recently. Not exactly sure, uh, but I don't think EOS is going to have a revival. I think Laramir is out, which is, a good, which is good news for EOS, because he was a horrible, horrible leader for EOS. But I think, like, the fight between EOS and Cardano ended a long time ago, and, like, Cardano basically beat EOS into the ground, uh, especially in terms of their market cap. 
And Cardano's, if you look at Cardano's, both Cardano's dollar value and the number of Cardano locked, it's actually growing. Like very, very slowly, but it is actually growing. If you look at DeFi Llama and Cardano, um, I think it's going to grow more ever since like this lace wall that's actually been released. So total value locked $160.96 million. You look at, it's been growing since early 2022, but so is everything else. Uh, if you look at uh, number of USD locked, obviously it's gone from 52 million to 160 million. But if you look at number of ADA locked since the beginning of the year, you can see that since the beginning of the year, there's been like, it's gone from 200 million ADA to over almost 400 million ADA locked. So despite, um, and the number of ADA locked in terms of uh, Cardano and DeFi is basically like the highest it's ever been, I think. So, uh, so like essentially I do think Cardano is, uh, I think Cardano is definitely uh, heading up. The only time, the only time like when Cardano TVL has actually been higher was when Cardano was a lot higher value. It's already more than half its all time high in terms of TVL. I'm not, I don't know much about symbiosis finance. Yeah. Like EOS funeral. Yes. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. But anyways, like EOS might have like they might have been tr they might be trying to exhume EOS and zombify it. Zombie EOS. That's right. And its leader should be Zombie Laramir. L zombie EOS and Zombie Laramir. Are we on the moon yet? No, we are not on the moon yet, but we are getting there. Zombie Laramir. Uh, when does base come out? That will bring more new people to Ethereum L2s in the next bull run. Uh, well, yes, but remember Coinbase doesn't actually use uh, any kind of coin as gas token. It just uses Ethereum. I'm not really sure when it comes out because I think Coinbase didn't make a token because they really can't. Schwartz cashed in on all the bearable guy hype without warning people. Now he wants to run his yap. Well... I think it was wrong of Schwartz to even entertain Bearable Guy in any of those theories because he knew they were all fake. But the thing is, he's trying to clear up things now because I think this might actually hurt Ripple in this lawsuit if it keeps it, if he lets it continue. Yes, I still think it's 40k by June. Uh, I mean, the market should be exciting to some people right now, but it's still not overall exciting to the retail investor. I've got to learn how to play this thing. I like. I, but I, I can't really spend time to learn the harmonica though. I don't I don't even know how to make See, I can't really like I don't Yeah, okay, so I figured this out. The 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 more you go to this side, the sharper it is, the higher it is. The more you go to that side, like the lower it is. So, based on that so uh, I, based on that, I might actually try to learn how to play this thing sooner or later. I tried with the Ocarina and it just wouldn't work. Any AI coin that hasn't exploded yet. I mean, I mean, chain GPT if you want to risk it, but that's a really, really big risk. I also don't think the AI coins have really exploded altogether. I think there was a FOMO, but during the next bull run, there's going to be a mega FOMO. I will sue Schwartz. I mean, Schwartz never has actually, I don't think Schwartz ever really made it a prediction on price all that much. There's like, he's saying the $120, but that's, he's saying like if XRP does everything we want it to do or whatever. I don't know, man. I was never much of a musical talent. Today is the anniversary of Titanic hitting the iceberg. We should have a minute of silence. Okay, five seconds. Silence over. Titanic hit the iceberg roughly, I think, like 112, 113 years ago. So rest in peace. Rest in peace. But, I mean, today, yeah. Who had relatives on the Titanic? Not I. I don't think there were Chinese people on the Titanic. You need to uh, grow a beard and make like drunken master kung fu. I could be seen as the wise master of kung fu, but realistically, it'd take forever me to, for for uh, forever for me to actually grow a beard. Bucks or Sixers? Uh, bucks. Fourteenth of April, nineteen twelve. So roughly a hundred eleven years ago. 
Wait till they find out that the iceberg was actually a German U-boat shaped in this shaped like an iceberg. Heart partner with Hedera is the AI that's not pumped yet. Maybe, maybe. I mean, look, there's a bunch of these. These are there's a bunch of these AI projects. That one might actually be massive, or it could turn out to be a nothing burger. So if, for all the uh, Hedera fanatics, that actually might be the way to go for AI. That's why you shouldn't go fast on the ocean. Hard to slow down. Yeah, it was actually going really fast for a cruise liner, especially in an area where you know there's to be you where you know there's going to be an iceberg. So, I mean, obviously bad. Titanic had a USO cover up. I mean, I think that would be viable if World War One had already started, which it hadn't. My dog was on the Titanic. He was rescued. Nice, nice. H bar is the business. I think H bar will do. I actually do think H bar will do very, very well. I definitely think H bar will do very well. The Boston Marathon bomber will be executed soon. I haven't thought about that guy in a long time, man. I think like all the mass shootings recently have just like numbed my uh, feelings towards like all this death and destruction because we have like a new one every single day, which is really crappy, by the way. One of the things, like, my, my brother-in-law from Australia came to visit us, and he was, like, just, he was confounded by the fact that we haven't put uh, more gun restrictions on since we have all these mass shootings. I swap all my H-bar for sauce O dot Dex. The Dexes are always a toss-up, you know? Like, I, I mean, I feel like DeFi is going to do really well in the next bull run, but I think, like, half these protocols are going to die before that comes. So if you, if, if you actually invest in the half that doesn't die before the next run comes, I think you're going to do really well. Can H-bar hit a dollar? Yes, I do believe H-bar can hit a dollar in the next bull market. People are still saying that like the supply is way greater than what it was last time. And while that's true, the supply is still smaller. The supply is like still smaller than a lot of other cryptos that have hit a dollar before uh, until they personally get affected. Look, the right to bear arms, obviously, look, uh, the founding fathers obviously don't, don't mean you can, like, bear any kind of arms. Because I don't think it was legal for, like, private individuals to have, like, gigantic cannons back then. And obviously, you're not allowed to have nukes or tanks. So it's not like you, it's not like, like you can bear any kind of weapon you want. Politicians won't back them until they're personally affected. What do you think of track? I haven't heard anything from track in a very long time. They seem to be very, very much si uh, silent right now. I thought they were actually going to be a pretty good project, but they, I haven't heard anything from them. Have you already talked about the lawyer's analysis? Yes, I have talked about the no, lawyer's analysis. Um, basically, Jeremy Hogan thinks that like Ripple is going to win because of the decentralization issue. I actually don't think they're going to win because of that. I think there's other reasons they could win, but I don't think that it's, they're going to win on the decentralization issue. The SEC has already stated as long as you have a pre-mine, it should be a security. Look at the number of deaths with mass stabbings and like mass shootings. It's not even close. Because like... You know, with mass shootings, you, like especially if you have an AR-15, you can just spray people from a long time, a long distance away. With mass stabbings, you actually have to get next to the person and stab them, and they have a much better chance of fighting you off. This pullback is not scary; it's normal profit taking. Next up wave is the coming days for crypto market. You can own tanks in Texas. Well, I, I know that there are ranges where you can go fire tanks. I don't know if you can actually own a tank with like an armed turret without like some kind of like with, without going through hoops and licenses. Track is pumping pretty good, but like I haven't heard of any new partnerships with Track though. It might be doing pretty well. I heard Jake uh, was on UFC.
Yeah, but privateers had an, privateers had another purpose. The U.S. actively used privateers to actually attack the British Navy. Like they were like like privateers were like part of the paramilitary back then. Takes balls to stab, no balls to shoot. Well, I mean, like, because shooting a bunch of people is significantly easier than like stabbing a bunch of people. Track is pumping pretty good. I don't actually think that's true that there's more deaths each year in France alone than in the US. Why weren't you impressed with the soul price? For I don't really see why I would actually buy the soul phone. I my my like my iPhone works just fine. The kill knock Mexus Carolins. George said last night that Vulcan Forge PYR is another gala with potential. I mean, Vulcan Forge has, all, has actually been doing pretty well. It's not as widely known as gala, so it might actually have some potential. I think they're on Polygon now, though. Soul Phone is just like Solana. It doesn't work. I don't really know if it actually works or not. Um, but to me, it looks like a regular phone. So if it was Jeremy Hogan, the description of pro XRP lawyer is fully correct. It was Jeremy Hogan, and yes, he is a pro XRP lawyer. Will Soul Phone go down as much as their coin chain? Hopefully not, because then you won't be able to make calls. Is what is what is Poof Token? So Poof Token is point oh eight four two seven. Um, we don't really know what the market cap is. There is zero volume for it. So I generally don't buy coins with no volume. It's very, very hard to actually trade out. It's actually very, very hard to trade out. I actually think like the whole Bud Light thing is kind of funny. And I actually think like right now might be a pretty good time to pick up like some Bud Light shares. It's never a good time to pick up a can of Bud Light because it tastes like horse piss. But it might be a good time to piss, uh, to, to, uh, to pick up some Bud Light shares. I do think it'll actually recover. Yeah, look, look, I don't, uh, I don't actually like. If a coin doesn't have a couple hundred thousand dollars in liquidity, I would definitely don't uh, think people should buy it, because you're basically buying a coin that you really can't cash out from. Even uh, Metosphere, even if you ratio it between citizens, I th I'm pretty sure the U.S. has a lot more debt, like a lot more crime deaths than France does. Our social, welfare, our social welfare system isn't nearly as good as France's. Like the less people that you have in, the less people that are actually at the bottom of the ladder, the less crime you're going to have. I don't mind Bud Light, especially when I'm losing weight. I don't, I just don't really drink beer. So, cause I, I hate the taste of beer. So I don't really have the, the problem with beer making me gain weight, honestly. People that drink Bud Light are afraid of tasting beer that they won't change. EWT, like, I don't, I don't think I trust EWT all that much because they keep on saying that, like, they said they had some kind of connection with Elon Musk a while, like, a couple of years ago, and I don't think they did. I don't think they'll determine all altcoins to be securities because I don't actually think the SEC is going to straight up win this case. It's probably going to be a couple of years before this is all said and done. Torres seems to be more favorable towards Ripple than a lot of other judges. So I'm hoping for a decent, re I'm actually hoping for a decent result in this lawsuit. I don't expect a catastrophic loss for Ripple. Whenever altcoins get banned, BTC will code a Pluto. See, I don't actually think so. I, I think that's a wrong assumption that all the money from alts is going to flow into BTC. I think a lot of the money is just going to leave the market.
Bit True got hacked. Uh, I think BitTrue's gotten hacked in the past. Yeah, but unfortunately, the U.S. is even worse than France in terms of... Um, in terms of crime rate. The murder rate for the U.S. is almost four times that of France. A crypto exchange bit true suffers 23 million hack due to hot wallet exploit. Was that, uh, is that just right? Is that right now? Is that right now? Crypto exchange bit true drain of, oh, wow. That's, that's no good. So crypto exchange bit true drained of $23 million hack of other Shiba Inu and other tokens. Very, very bad for BitTrue right now. Not good news. Hackers drained $23 million from a wallet belonging to Singapore-based crypto exchange BitTrue, but did not specify how the attack took place. We've identified a brief exploit in one of our hot wallets, uh, April 14th, 2023. We were able to address this matter quickly and prevented the further exploit of funds, but I, I don't know how much. The attackers were able to withdraw assets worth approximately 23 million USD in the following currencies, Ethereum, QNT, Gala, Shiba, Hot, and Polygon. Bitru said the affected wallet contained less than 5% of all overall reserves and the remaining wallet was not compromised. The exchange was temporarily suspended while withdrawals expected to reopen withdrawals on April 18th. All identified users who are affected by the incident will be compensated in full. So no one should actually be losing money. But obviously, it does not do well for the reputation of BitTrue to actually get hacked. It could be an inside job, but if it's an inside job, I don't think the, I don't think the crypto exchange would actually reimburse all its users. I mean, a lot of the security is just pretty shoddy for these things. It could be an inside job from someone, and, this, and like the CEO just doesn't really know about it. Anyone else have an XRD bag yet or waiting for Binance Coinbase listing? I mean, look, if, you're, if your coin doesn't have a listing on a big exchange and it gets a Binance and Coinbase listing, yes, it's going to go up pretty big. Is Quant overhyped? Um, I'm actually going to say like no because I haven't heard that much hype about Quant. I'm still looking in the like $3,000 for Quant in the next bull run, but I definitely might be overshooting. You can, su you can surprise more people, but you like... Try mass stabbing in a classroom versus mass shooting in a classroom. The mass shooter is going to kill a lot more people. It's, it's, it's much easier just to spray people with bullets than to actually physically stab them. Because stabbing, like having an automatic weapon and spray, like hosing down a room of people takes like zero skill. Whereas if you try to mass stab like a classroom full of people, like someone might just punch you in the face. What about Alluvium? I don't know, but I mean, like, I think Alluvium is going to do pretty well. Look, I like my my three my three bets for uh, Metaverse would actually be Alluvium, Sandbox, and Gala. I think all that we will have to pay if it goes through high. Yeah, the, the thing is, like, if you have like a mass stabbing in a classroom, someone can just pick up a chair and box you over the head with it. I thought the exchanges I thought the exchanges own the coins. Um no, like technically the coin are, the, the coins are still supposed to be yours, although in the agreements of some exchanges, the exchanges do claim right over your coins. I don't know if that will stand in court though.
why Gala has so many bands. And also with a gun, you can shoot someone from far away. Like, with stabbing, you have to get right next to them. Bro, even if you carried a weapon, as long as the other guy drew first, you'd still be dead. Solar flare will mass... Solar flare will knock out a lot of the comm systems. And that's going to be a big problem. Yeah, but knives aren't as effective. And if you actually look at the homicide rate, it's actually much lower. And bombs are actually ha much harder to get. There aren't nearly as many bombings as shootings because you can't buy guns. You can't buy bombs of the market. I'm pretty sure if you can walk in... Look, I'm pretty sure we would have a lot more bomb deaths if you can walk into Bass Pro Shop and buy a bomb. The reason we don't have as many bombings is because bombs are actually illegal. I did not see the safe haven tweet about... It. Well, I, I haven't seen it yet, but like... Safe swap is kind of like, is their decks, right? They were having some kind of rewards program off of it. Yeah, but look at the crime and murder rates of like Western, like of first world Western nine nations that don't actually, uh, actually don't have that many guns. It, they're a lot less than the United States. I remember a PS1 game, Siphon Filter, knives were more efficient than guns on multiplayer death. Yeah, but that, that's like a video game. Like in League of Legends, people with like knives and blades can, are, can uh, d do just as much damage as people with a gun. But, you know, the thing is, like, that doesn't really apply in real life. XRD Top 100 and Live Coin Watch are ranked like Coin Market Cap. And if you're blaming cartel violence, if you're actually blaming cartel violence, you should know that most of the cartel's weapons actually come from the United... Most of the cartel's guns actually do come from the United States. The arms sales traffic's mostly from the United States to Mexico because it's so easy to get guns here. In, uh, in Scotland, police... Why does, a San, why does San Alluvium and Gala have billions in market cap? It's because people are like looking at their future possibilities, not what they are right now. Could 100,000 min tokens? I don't think so. I mean, it'd be nice if it could. I don't think so, though. Guns aren't banned in Europe, but it's much harder to get them, and the licensing is a lot stricter. Like, people actually think that, like, cartels from Mexico bring weapons here. No, it's actually the other way around. Is $2,000 a fair... I think $2,000 is fair for QNT. I mean, like, we're talking about very optimistic scenarios, obviously. We're, we're, like, we're definitely talking about very, very optimistic scenarios, but I do think, like, there's a decent chance that those optimistic scenarios will actually work out. Uh, 10 bucks in the next bull run? Um, I mean, I, don't, I won't say it's impossible. I definitely won't say it's impossible. But... The, the supply of min swap isn't re the supply of min isn't really that high. I'll give you that. I'll definitely give you that the supply of min min isn't that high.
no, that like the fact that Biden traded for him is going to be in, inconsequential for which way the guns go. Because you can't get guns so easily in Mexico. You can get them so easily in the United States. You don't need to traffic weapons into the United States because they're already here. Like, you can literally go into Dick's Sporting Goods and buy one. Why would you need to traffic them in? Minswap is like four cents right now. I don't know about $10, man. I mean, for a small coin like this, it's possible. Only $28 million market cap. But remember, there's a lot like the min supply is only 14% out. So you have to look for price. You have to look for supply inflation as well. You definitely have to like look for supply inflation as well for min swap. Radix will overtake Cardano by 2025. I'll believe that when I see it. Altcoin season is going to be as good as previous bull runs. You know, the thing is, I don't know if it is. Because like, look, the, the one way that I can see an altcoin season be really, really good is if like China, the, the whole thing with China and Hong Kong works out well for crypto. We get a Bitcoin ETF sometime in 2024, which is possible. And then that would make us go way, way up. I do actually like VeChain, Yes. I, I Look, if XRP loses the case, I think XLM screwed as well. Yes, there is the fact that the Stellar Foundation is non-profit, but I don't think that really matters. Radix? I mean, it seems like a pretty... It, it does seem like a pretty good project. You know, the, like, I do actually find it really weird that, like, the Ripple Liquidity Hub doesn't actually include XRP. Um, I don't really know why that is. That's something I didn't actually expect. But either way, let's actually talk about Twitter actually getting to crypto. So Elon Musk, as most of you know, Elongus Muskus, as most of you know, has actually partnered with eToro. And I'm pretty sure they want to be, like, a crypto and bank, uh, a crypto trading hub. Will Algo recover from their exploit? Probably. I mean, like, you give enough time, people will actually forget. It just takes a while for people to forget. Something like FTX, people may not forget, but, like, something like Algo, they probably will actually forget. eToro app is a bit hit and miss. It is, but, like, Elon, like Twitter partnering with eToro, like, that's the first step to, like, you being able to trade um, crypto or stocks on eToro. And make no mistake, Elon Musk needs this to actually save Twitter. Because Twitter's financials aren't looking so, probably don't look so well. And the, and the people that invest in Twitter are probably not too happy with Elon Musk um, in the way that like Twitter is actually bleeding money at this point. So like, I think that's the only chance that Elon Musk can actually make Twitter profitable. I don't really see any other way for Elon Musk to actually make Twitter profitable. Why are most also stuck on support? Because I think right now people still have more confidence in Bitcoin and the bigger alts than like the smaller ones. People really have to look for a market rebound before they invest in smaller alts. Twitter had four months to live when Musk took over. I, I'm pretty sure they could have gotten more loans for more than four months. But realistically, he hasn't done a great job of actually making Twitter profitable. I don't. I think financially it's just as bad as it was, if not worse. They lost a lot of advertisers. Like, I don't think the Saudis and the Kuwaitis are actually really, are very happy with what Elon Musk has done with Twitter. But, you know, if he actually turns it into a crypto uh, slash like stock trading hub, it could definitely become profitable again. I mean, that's why I think that's why he's so gung ho on it, because like he knows that's basically the only way he can actually save Twitter. Now, the BBC is fine. I don't use Twitter anymore. Did you see Elon roast that BBC stooge? Um, no, actually not. Takes years to make a company profitable sometimes. That's true, but I mean, like, I think we can all agree that Twitter was a really bad buy for Elon Musk, at least from a financial side. I'm sure he's having a lot of fun with it, but financially, it's kind of been a disaster for him. And I don't really see Twitter, the platform, ever really being, like... The platform and its advertising business on its own, I don't really see ever really being profitable. It's just not a very good platform to actually make. 
Like Twitter, in terms of a company platform to make money off of, is just not very good. Like no one actually wants to buy ads on Twitter. Despite like how much uh, how much more like um, people are interacting with Twitter as Elon Musk claims, it just like the financial side of it is just it does not look pretty. A profitable selling your data to government. I think they can only make so much off of that. I'm pretty sure they, I'm almost sure they do sell data, but like Elon has been campaigning like crazy to, for people to actually pay for Twitter blue. And there's just not enough people that actually pay for Twitter blue. Not like now he's got like a thousand dollar validation for companies and big companies are not wanting to pay a thousand dollars to be validated. I was in chemistry class when the planes hit the twin towers. Where the hell is Tenor Life exactly? People have been talking about that a lot, but where the hell is Tenor Life? Did you see a bullfight when you were in Spain? I did not see the bull. Well, I've never been to Spain, so. Thanks, man. Thanks for the donation. Every last cent helps. Thanks for the donation. But the, the whole Twitter thing, uh, the whole Twitter purchase with Elon Musk, like, I think he's really, really depending on the crypto thing to actually make it a big, uh, to make it a success. Because I don't think he can actually make Twitter a sex success without crypto. Twitter is optional. It went away tomorrow. No stress. I actually wouldn't care if Twitter went away tomorrow. I mean, like, I personally don't really use it except for announcing stuff. Complete no, 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 no. Off the coast of Africa, I see. One of your videos from 2020s uh, for my bull run success, you correctly predicted the spring 2021 peak. Nice, nice. Well, I do predict a lot of things, so it's good to get something right, obviously. What do you hold, crypto? I hold VET, Cardano, uh, Chainlink, uh, BAT, and a couple of others. BAT is more like I kind of have to hold it because I just don't want to move it from uphold. Plus, it really annoys Elizabeth Warren and Ginzer, who, who he hates. I suppose Ginzer actually hasn't said too much about Twitter, though. He's too busy with other things right now. Like, Ginsler is, like, way, way too busy with other things to actually care about this crap right now. Because I, I don't know if Ginsler thinks... I don't really know what Ginsler truly thinks. Like, does he actually think he's going to win all these cases? Does he know he's not winning all these cases? We don't really know. We can only kind of guess what Ginsler really, really thinks. $17 XRD end of the year. That's Radix, right? There, there are a couple of big Radix uh, bulls out there. Definitely a couple of big Radix bulls out there. I, of course, am not a rat. I am not really a Radix bull, though. So, yeah. I'm not really a Radix bear either. I'm kind of neutral on it. As far as Radix sponsoring consensus 2023 in Austin. Nice, nice. Has any of you, have any of you actually been to consensus? I've actually never been to consensus. But it does seem to be a pretty big it does seem to be a pretty big deal industry wise. I've actually never been to consensus myself. Uh, are you next to an aerodome? I hear planes. There is like a, an airport. I mean my private airport's in the back. No, I'm just kidding. There's actually an airport like down the street. It's called the Spirit of St. Louis Airport. That's why there's planes buzzing over all the time. There's constantly like test pilots flying around here. You see, VET is staked as soon as it goes sent to Vetho. Nothing else needs to be done. Well, the thing is, technically, just holding VET in a VeChain wallet should actually get you staking rewards. Radix is a soap company. I won tickets in a giveaway last week, but can't attend due to prior schedule events. Oh, that sucks. I mean, I'm not big for these crypto events. I don't think, like, if there was one in Wisconsin and it didn't cost an arm and a leg to go to, I probably would go to it. But if it costs, like, 500 bucks for a ticket, I probably wouldn't. Make sure you actually be able to cash out or withdraw your bat from Uphold. Uh, heard horror stories. I mean, if it's stuck, it's stuck. But I'm hoping that once I get all my bank confirmations in, I will actually be able to withdraw. 
Uphold has like some new KYC rules though, which could actually be kind of annoying. I'll give you that much. Radix DLT isn't a soap company. I see. What's my, what do you mean my tech take on Element United? I don't exactly know what that is. Lakers will beat Memphis. I think Lakers in six, man. I think Lakers in six. Assuming that AD and LeBron both stay healthy. Health is the main enemy of the Lakers. Because, like, Lakers definitely, like, if AD and LeBron were healthy all season, they definitely wouldn't be, like, a seventh seed. Especially with all their new additions. But we shall see what happens. We shall see what happens with the Lake, Lake Show. Oh, it's in Vegas? I would, like, go to Vegas anyways, just for fun. I, I probably wouldn't attend consensus, but I would go for fun. Uh, Gia will beat Kings. We'll see. GSW hasn't looked all that good this year. Yeast will be predictable either Boston or Milwaukee. I think Philadelphia has the opportunity to actually, like, surprise a lot of people. I think Philly has a really strong team as well, but I, I would guess Boston or Milwaukee as well. What ADA NFT side is there now? I, it's still the same one, isn't it? I got all ADA from Uphold like two years ago. I had no problems. Kimes is having some XRP meetup in Vegas for 1500 Dude, dude, seriously? Kimes is charging 1500 bucks for an XRP meetup? Why would you pay $1,500 to go meet up with a bunch of wackos? And it's not like Kimes, it's not like Brad Kimes has any inside information or anything. Sixers has the Harden curse. I mean, Harden's nowhere near as good as he used to be, but Embiid's, like, Embiid's a complete monster, though. So, like, I'm actually a believer in Joel, and Joel Embiid, man. He's a monster. Philly versus Boston in round two will be the best series of the playoffs, maybe. I mean, I, I do remember they tried to charge, like, what was, like, five ninety nine or whatever a couple of years ago for, like, what happened during, like, uh, Swell. And then, like, Ripple was like, nah, we're not inviting you back to Swell. Dude, $1,500 is a really high price for, like, someone that's not a part of the company. And someone has who has, like, no inside information. Like, meeting a bunch of Riddlers for $1,500, not worth, man. If you went to a Bitcoin conference and created content like videos while being there and you would make money back with your YouTube revenue? Maybe, maybe. I mean, like, there are plenty of people that actually make content at consensus. I don't think it'll actually go straight to $5 if it beats the SEC. Not in this market and not unless Bitcoin goes higher. I think it'll probably, like, double and that's about it if it beats the SEC. ADA will always be the little brother to Ethereum, unfortunately. I mean, right now, yeah, because, like, even Cardano is making, like, an EVM, right? So you're probably right about that, at least for the next couple of years. If you went to an event like Bitcoin Conference and created content. I think I would even make more if I made some BS secret society meeting and pretended I had a bunch of insiders there. Like fake Bohemian Grove, uh, Gro Grove, kind of thing. He got 18k from XR for a documentary he was going to make. Did that documentary ever come out, or did he just take the money and buy a car or something? I don't think that. I don't think that documentary ever came out. Did it? Did it? Did a, do a meetup for 6.99 and sell it for 50% off? I would do a meetup for like 10 bucks. Actually, you know what? I would just do a meetup where it doesn't really cost any money. And then I would just ask people for donations next time. I would just ask people for donations next time they come on stream. Because meeting people is kind of like, I meet people like when I'm fishing all the time. I don't charge any money to actually go fish with people. It's just a lot of fun. And my fishing in St. Louis has actually not been that successful because does not like seem the does not seem like the catfish are biting all that much, and I don't really know the spots around St. Louis, unfortunately. Do not know the spots around St. Louis where the fish are biting, which really pisses me off because I would like to know. I would really, really like to know. What's your? I don't know what Element United is. What the hell is Element United?
but I mean, right now, all the other L1s are little brothers to Ethereum, and most of them are building some kind of EVM or other to link up with Ethereum to take advantage of its liquidity. Like, the money talks, man, and the money's at, at Ethereum right now. People kind of forgot about the documentary, have no idea what he did with the money. I mean, I think that was his plan all along. Say that he's going to do a documentary, don't do one, and just wait for people to forget. And then, like, when Alex Cobb said he actually, like, embezzled the money, like, threatened to sue Cobb. That's kind of like what Kimes did. Yes, I can speak Chinese. So, yeah, people do forget after some time, even if they donated a bunch of money. So he did actually, like, if, if that's true, he did take, like, other people's money. I don't really know what the hell happened with the documentary. Yes, it takes time to make a documentary, but I just don't really see any kind of like sneak peeks or anything. It's like 19 at the time. I remember that. Was he only 19 at the time? He's like, he's like over, I think he's over 21 now. There's going to be some point in the, there's going to be some point along this where you can't just refer to him as a kid anymore. Times and Miss, Mrs. Backup went on vacation with the 18K. Probably, but, you know, we can't really say that for sure. Kime was, uh, Cobb was invited. I mean, why would you be afraid to go? This was, and that was, I do remember this was before COVID, so you could actually go. Lon stopped accepting BTC for Tesla. Because he didn't want BTC. Like, because, like, Tesla actually has bills and he needs to pay with cash. That's why. Like, Tesla actually has operating costs. They need to pay salaries and stuff. So they actually need cash. Because all they were doing with the BTCs, they were selling the Bitcoin for cash. So he doesn't actually want some. He wants something that's more easily to use. How long does it take to make a documentary? It depends what kind of documentary. Like for some documentaries, it literally takes forever. But for like an XRP documentary, I don't think it would actually take all that long. Especially since he actually went to Swell. He could have just gotten a bunch of interviews with people around Swell. Look, I, I personally, in my opinion, a documentary is not happening. I think like people just forgot about it. If you ask him about it now, he'll still say he's making the documentary. But I doubt there's actually any kind of work on a documentary. Launch with Buffett pocket money. Let's see. And he and never forgot CKJ got scammed and thought about a ticket to Singapore. I don't know if he set that up himself, but maybe he did get scammed. A YouTuber bear I wonder if you are tell that the Liverpool liquidity hub for companies include BTC. Probably not. Like, I don't really understand why the liquidity hub would not actually include XRP. I just find that really, really weird. I really, really find that strange. Like, because that's got to be like, that's got to be bad for Ripple just from a PR standpoint. If it's not, if they're not, if they're not going to include XRP as uh, in terms of the liquidity hub. Oh, look, Energy actually gave me some... Uh, no, that's that's a scam email, obviously. Uh, this guy found Parable Guy in the woods. I see, I see. I was listening to your stream about five minutes late. Uh, the robber... Of, the the St. Jude thing was like... The St. Jude thing was like really, really bad for CKJ. I'll give you that. Say... Stop trying to get me to say things in Chinese. I'm not interested. XRP documentary finished. I mean, realistically, that CKJ thing like looked like really, really scripted. I don't hold H bars, no. I like H bars, but I don't really hold them. I do think I am very bullish on. I am uh, very bullish on the project, though. What about CKJ?
I mean, look, I, I don't really comment on that stuff. I, I really don't care what CKJ does. Uh, he has another channel right now. I, I, he, he got a new channel. I think he still does crypto stuff. Brad Kimes has tried to rinse his audience. I mean, a lot of people still watch his videos because they obviously still believe in him. It's not like those guys don't believe in him. They obviously still believe in that stuff. The whole, like, finding bearable guy in the woods is obviously BS. Obviously, that's just more for, like, getting viewers and marketing stuff, but, you know. Now, Bullzilla, one, two, three. I mean, the, the thing about that stuff is, like, none of those theories about XRP ever really came true. So, I think people, like, people have to find a new angle to actually hype, uh, hype the same thing over and over again. Because the old angles really aren't working. I'm sure they are because Ethereum has basically gone, has gained more than Bitcoin recently. But you still have to realize that Bitcoin's over twice the, the market cap that Ethereum is. YouTubers do a lot of things for clicks, man. And saying something that will flip, saying something that will, will flip Bitcoin gets them clicks. They did it like they did it in the last bull run as well. They try to establish unlikely narratives. The more unlikely the narrative, the more clicks they get. Element United is a new real it's a new real world decentralized mining system, use real world minerals on blockchain. I mean, you mean like they represent real world minerals, right? How much would Ethereum price be uh, equal to BT? Look, Ethereum literally has to be like forty five hundred dollars while Bitcoin doesn't move at all to actually flip Bitcoin. Brad is uh, Brad is an odd fellow, and then suddenly disappeared. Ethereum won't flip BTC because it's non-scalable. Is it? It's not the fact that it's non-scalable. Whether it's scalable or not actually has nothing to do with whether we'll flip Bitcoin or not. The thing is, like the, the fact that Ethereum is unscalable actually probably makes it worth more because that pushes the fees up. Did the market cap shrink between the two? Then yeah, it did. It always shrinks when Bitcoin when when the market pumps, and then it like the, like then the market gap like uh, like really decreases when it comes back down. But it never really flips. Time will tell is basically like people's way of saying I'm wrong, but I won't admit it. It's basically like what the XR people people have said for like five or six years. Saying it yeah, will flip, you have no idea what, uh, no, 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 like Ethereum has to be like 40, like 43, 4400, while Bitcoin doesn't go up at all. In order for Ethereum to flip Bitcoin. But Bitcoin's not going to stay, Bitcoin is not going to stay like stationary while Ethereum goes up. So the opportunity to make money on YT making, that's what, like, that's what the whole XRP influencer community is. If you look at the, if you actually look at the rate of Ethereum deflation, it would take like a hundred, it would take like 10 or 15 years just to shrink like 1%. It's not really that, it's not really that consequential. And eventually it'll just become stable rather than deflationary. Here. Yes, it has dropped off a cliff. But if you actually look at the, if you actually look at the, uh, 
deflationary rate, it's like 0.1 of 1% per year, if even that. And they can always adjust that. Now, Ethereum doesn't have a theoretical max supply, but it doesn't really matter that Ethereum doesn't have a max supply because the rate of inflation and deflation just like makes that irrelevant. The deflation, look, the deflation isn't going to be that severe. Like it's it's less than 0.1 of 1%. You can't have a massively def like you can't sustain a massively deflationary ecosystem. Then you end up with something stupid like bomb coin. And the thing is, it'll be it'll actually be really, really devastating to the uh, e ecosystem if it's like highly deflationary. They'll have to change. They'll have to change that sooner or later. Because that's not like that's really not a good long term plan for any kind of ecosystem. After short statements on XRP, did the believers cool down? No, the believers will never cool down, especially the influencers, because that's basically their entire business. Because like without the w without the hype, they don't really have a business. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for right now. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button. I will be back later tonight, and I will see you guys later.